What's going on, everyone? Happy New Year's to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues. And that goes for all the viruses which are at play right now. There's quite a few of them out there. It is time for the New Year edition of the Pandemic Update for Monday. January 1st, 2024. That's right, it is our first video of the brand new year. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all the viruses that could be a risk to you and even animals. Yes, from time to time, we've talked about different diseases such as H5N1, chronic wasting disease, and other viruses that are out there. So if at the end of this video you learn anything, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. Alrighty, starting off today, we do have a few news stories to share with you. And then just a little bit of data today. So this is not going to be one of the longer pandemic updates. I suspect this will be a shorter update today. COVID-19 hospitalizations rise 15.2% in Montana. This is the first time we have heard anything from Montana in quite some time. The number of new COVID-19 hospital admissions in Montana rose 15.2% for the week ended in December 23rd. There were 121 new COVID-19 hospital admissions during that week, up from 105 a week earlier. So yes, COVID hospitalizations are rising. Hopefully the next time we see an update, they will start to drop in Montana. All right, we do have a few COVID positives to share with you. First off, Patty Newton, who is a theater actor, forced to miss opening night of Grease, the musical, after being struck down with COVID. Then we come over here to this. Rob Mills is sidelined from a performance that he was supposed to do, Juliet, the musical, He's not going to be able to do that because he has tested positive for COVID. Then we come over to this, and we don't really know what illness this is. We don't know if it's COVID. It doesn't say if it's COVID. But Cardi B, who performed last night on the Rockin' Eve, you know, Dick Clark's Rockin' New Year's Eve, apparently she did it while she was sick. Now, she was not in New York. She was in Miami. You know, they go to multiple different locations throughout the broadcast. But there is a video going out there, and I believe I saw the video. I don't know whether it was TikTok, Instagram, but I saw the video, parts of it, anyhow. And she, quote, said she was allergic to Florida, that she really felt bad. And I want you to take note of something. Here's the picture of her performing. I'm assuming this is from last night. I actually did not see the performance. But look behind her. If she's as sick as she says she is, all these people behind her. Now, we don't know what she has, but... You know what? She just put them all at risk. I get it. It's show business. The show must go on on TV, but I mean, come on. If you're that sick, literally, she put. She actually said in video, literally fighting for her life. Why the heck must you perform when you should be resting at home in quarantine? It's just totally ridiculous. All right, moving on from that one. India, it's not good. India logs highest single day rise in COVID-19 cases in 10 months. They reported 841 new cases. Now, we know that is likely an undercount, but again, that's the highest single day rise in more than seven months. And that came in on Sunday, by the way. I have not seen today's numbers yet. Hospital overcrowding. We're moving over to Ireland now. Hospital overcrowding surges on first day of new year as flu and COVID-19 cases spread. So yes, once again, they are dealing with overcrowding in hospitals in Ireland. If you read through this article, it actually says it's not as bad as the previous year, but hey, overcrowding in general, that's never a good thing. And it's like I've said many times here in the past few months, just the combination of viruses alone right now is a pandemic within itself. Flu, COVID, RSV, pneumonia, all these different viruses. Taking a look at the flu rate in Mississippi, it is said to be one of the highest flu rates in the entire country. Let's read a little bit of this. A significant jump in the number of flu cases in Mississippi. The latest update shows the statewide flu rate has climbed to 9.7%, up from 8% the previous week. 
That's the percentage of patients seeing their doctor who are complaining of flu-like symptoms, and it's among the highest rates in the country. So yes, this is not a good thing. If you are in Mississippi, please, please do whatever you can to mask up. You know, it's very important that you do that. All right, moving on. Let's take a look at the air qualities now. Not perfect air qualities across the country. We're seeing a lot of yellow areas popping up today. Uh, we're still seeing some poor air qualities in the west, in the north, places with fireplaces. However, we do come down here to the Gulf Coast, Louisiana and Texas, uncertain what's going on here. There's some moderate air qualities in these areas today, and even some uh, oranges close to red popping up, like New Orleans, Houston, and Austin. So it's something we will have to keep an eye on. Yesterday, I showed you in the wastewater update that Biobot is back. And what we are watching now is the north has been rising. The Great Lakes had a little bit of a pause and now it's starting to rise again. But what we're starting to see now is the south and the west pick up the pace. And it's coming right as people are about to go back to school and work. So that could be problematic going forward. And that could result in some fairly large office outbreaks, factory outbreaks, uh, schools, especially schools, and you know, once you get sick in school, then suddenly it starts spreading, it mixes, then you bring it home. Same thing with the office, you bring it home to your family. So that's something we have to be concerned about. Wastewater, look at this, it's pretty high in a lot of places, and in places where it's still just moderate or high, expect your levels probably to continue to increase. The peak, probably for every state, will not have probably fully peaked until the end of this month. Some states may start peaking as early as maybe next week. Not this week, but maybe next week. We'll see. We'll just have to see if everything goes as planned. Walgreens. We do not have an update from Walgreens today. Last week, it was 26.8% COVID positivity across the country. Hopefully, we'll get a Walgreens update again tomorrow. Let's see. What is this here? Epidemic status, where COVID is likely growing at this time. You can see here that it is... Yeah, it's growing and likely growing in quite a few states. Then we come down here to influenza. And I don't show this enough. I should show this more to be fair because, hey, flu is a problem as well. The vast majority of the states are at the highest level, which means growing. And then you just have one, two, three, four states that are likely growing, which are Maine, Connecticut, New York, and then you come over here to Colorado, which is also likely growing. And there are no estimates given for Hawaii or Alaska. I gotta start including Hawaii and Alaska more often because, hey, that's a part of the United States as well. So again, this is for influenza. And the first one you saw was for COVID, where, again, there's quite a few places where COVID is growing. JN.1 is the dominating variant at 44.2%. Number of people in the hospital, 29,000. 59. And let's go to southeast Pennsylvania. 782 EMS incidents were reported on New Year's Eve for the last day of 2023, December 31st. Let's do a live look in at what is going on in the Philadelphia Burbs right now. Look at this. Quiet, because it is New Year's Day. Some people are going to put this stuff off till tomorrow. However, Chester County, maybe not. Look at Chester County. There's quite a few calls here, about a dozen calls, and we're seeing several calls that say heart problems, respiratory difficulties, so that's not good. I'm expecting tomorrow for everywhere across the country. It's probably going to be a very big ambulance day because it's the day after New Year's. Speaking of ambulances and hospitals, we have to take a look at New Jersey, which, believe it or not, updated today. 66 out of 70 hospitals reporting. Look at hospitalizations. Yeah, this is not good. 1,258 people in the hospital. I suspect this number will continue to rise and likely go over 1,500 before they peak in just a few weeks' time. 35 people are on a ventilator. In the ICU, it's now up to 135. And let's see, were there any discharges yesterday? Oh, yes. 182 discharges. But again, despite there being 182 discharges, the number of people in the hospital still went up. So admission volume right now is getting rather high in the state of New Jersey. 
New York State did not update. There was 2,549 cases on the last update, and as of the 28th, they had 2,774 people in the hospital. I suspect that number is going to go over 3,000 this week. We'll see, though. Maybe it won't, but I suspect it's going to go over 3,000 this week. And when we take a look at New York City's number, let's do that, shall we? New York City's most recent number, as this refreshes on us, I'm going to zoom this in, and we will see that New York City was at 1,072, and I think that is likely to go up a little bit higher. We'll see how much higher it gets. Probably somewhere around January 10th is what people are saying is when the peak will be nationally, and I think because New York State is usually the first to become dominant with a variant, New York State would be one of the first states that peaks. We'll see. Hopefully that does happen. I don't have any other states that came in for you today. Things to look out for this week. we got to watch to see if there are big hospital increases in the next few days as states come in. I suspect we are going to see that happen. Right now is a really dangerous time. If you have to go back to work or school tomorrow or in the next few days, please do so masking. And please, this is just another little tip that I have for you. It would not hurt to take one of these, one of these rapid COVID tests before you go back. Because, you know what? Every case we can prevent, the better off we are. You do not want to go back to work and say, hmm, I'm starting to have a scratchy throat. Well, maybe if you took a test, maybe you could have found that beforehand. Because, you know what? There's going to be a lot of people testing positive over the next several days and weeks right now. We have well over a million people testing positive each and every day. And even, you know, I'm saying you should test when you go back. Probably after you go back, three, four days later, test again. Because it's possible you could pick up COVID or any of these viruses once you are back in the office or in school. Alrighty, folks, that's all I have for you today. I'm not going to drag this out any longer because I have nothing else for you today. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content, subscribe to my channel down below. And, hey, share this with anyone you think needs to see this content. Who else out there is giving you a daily update where we're spending 10 to 15, sometimes even 20 minutes talking about viruses that could impact your health? Hey, I'm not here to control your life. I get comments like that sometimes saying, oh, it's fear, it's this, it's that, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm just reporting on the news as I see it, I'm just reporting the data, which is hardcore data, and presenting it to you. You take it as you will, but again, this is data that could help save your life and could help keep you healthy. Because guess what? The news, they spend maybe 20 seconds on They're not telling you out what's going on. I get so many people that say, oh, I didn't realize that this was such a thing. How come you never hear anything about it? It's because they are being told to be silenced for some reason. I will not be silenced, and I will continue to be here for as long as this is a thing, and there afterwards. So, yep, that's all I have for you today. I will see you guys all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic New Year, and enjoy the rest of your Monday. See you all again tomorrow. Thanks for watching.